Hello, how are you doing? I have a pile of brand new books that I'm eager to discuss and to read, especially because several of these books I've not seen any other readers talking about or even seen them reviewed in periodicals, but I think they all sound really interesting. So I'm going to discuss why they're all new books that have just been published here in the UK in September. Some of them publishers kindly sent me and others I bought myself just because I'm so keen to read them. So I'm going to get into each book, but I first want to say this video is very kindly sponsored by Serious Readers who produce a range of indoor reading lights, one of which I use all the time. So more on them soon. Now the first book I want to talk about is 15 Wild Decembers by Karen Powell. And can you tell what this novel will be about? Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's about the life of Emily Bronte. Uh, yes, it's sort of set on uh, the, the Yorkshire Moors. And it's about her life um, after her childhood, sort of going out into the world and finding that she doesn't really fit in anywhere. So it's following um, her, her life, um, the, the start of um, her as an author. I mean, she had been writing for um, quite a while before, but, um, but producing, you know, her great classic masterwork. And um, so it's, it's following uh, that story. And I, I feel like, you know, we're never going to get over this romantic fixation we have about the Brontes. I mean, I certainly have it. And uh, I got to, to visit the Bronte Parsonage one at Haworth and, and go wander on the moors and it was such a beautiful and moving experience and partly because I saw so many other people there that obviously went there as kind of like a pilgrimage because the, the Bronte's books mean so much to them personally um, so that was wonderful to see and I feel like this book is going to bring back um, that experience and it also seems like a, a perfect kind of autumnal read doesn't it? I made an, another video recently talking about books I want to read for autumn. And this is another one. Avenues by Train by Farai Mudzinwa, uh, who is a Zimbabwean author. This is about a man in his mid-20s who witnesses a horrific train accident and the, the death of his boyhood friend. And uh, he, he wants to um, escape his surroundings, so he moves to a more remote area. Um, but there he starts to encounter ancestral spirits. Um, so it's it's a book that sounds like it kind of flirts with the supernatural, uh, but is also about uh, Zimbabwean um, history uh, and the the politics of the country. The Glutton by A. K. Blakemore. Uh, this is a historical novel based on a real story, an account of a man or a kind of man child uh, who develops this insatiable appetite and could just eat and eat endlessly and never seem to gain any weight. Um, so it's set in the 17th century in France and uh, it follows um, his story as he's making his journey and um, people are discovering that he has a special ability and uh, it's about a nun who's overseeing him and um, kind of supervising him to see if, if what he is doing is actually true. Um, it sounds like such a fascinating story and I read A.K. Blakemore's um, previous novel the Manning Tree Witches, um, which I really enjoyed. Um, she's a really interesting new writer. Um, I saw her speak earlier this year at a literary event uh, about this novel, and it sounds um, fascinating, uh, but also like really gritty in a, in a really uh, in a really enticing way. A Life in Chameleons by Selby Wynne Schwartz. Uh, this is another novel that is partly based on the, the lives of real life historical figures and it especially centers around the life of Leopoldo Frigoli, who was an Italian uh, queer quick change artist um, that was known as the chameleon. But it's also about um, encounters with a number of uh, other real historical figures and weaves them into this fiction. And um, Selby Wynne Schwartz uh, is a really fascinating kind of experimental writer um, who became well known for her uh, novel After Sappho, um, which was listed for the, the Booker Prize. And I just think this sounds fascinating. Land of Milk and Honey by C. Pam Jane. Uh, this is a novel about a, a chef in London. Uh, 
uh, who uh, become slightly disillusioned with life there um, as crops are, are failing and moves to this remote uh, area which has been uh, artificially created by um, this super elite group um, to try to sort of escape the um, the environmental disaster of the world and um, there she finds a new life for herself and discovers new desires. Uh, so uh, C. Pam Jane is also a very interesting writer that was also listed for the Booker Prize. My Blue Peninsula by Maureen Freely. Uh, this is a novel about a woman um, living in Istanbul and who chooses to stay living there even after her life was threatened. So the narrative uh, takes place um, over a series of notebooks that she's writing to her adult daughters trying to explain why she's remaining in this city um, even though there's a lot of political turmoil. Um, so it's it's um, looking at the, the history of this um, city and, and country um, through this personal lens. As I mentioned in the beginning, this video is very kind sponsored by Serious Readers, a company that creates high quality reading lights for indoor use. I've been using this lamp for around a year now and it's really effective, especially as we are now officially in autumn. So the daylight is shortening and it's frequently cloudy outside. The Serious Light helps me to illuminate the book that I'm reading and it does this better than any other lighting in my flat. What's more, it is so good for reading in the middle of the night when I can't sleep and the beam from this lamp is focused enough that it doesn't wake up my partner that is sleeping beside me who is very light sensitive. The great thing about Sirius lights is that they replicate the daylight spectrum as closely as technically possible with what they call daylight wavelength technology. So the light feels warm and natural. I have a high definition table light in white with a lightweight base. Its neck is very easy to manipulate and angle so it shines exactly where I want it. Additionally there's a dimmer switch so I can easily make the light brighter or weaker and I can also adjust the beam width so more or less space is illuminated. I'll put a link to this Serious Readers website in the description below so you can check them out and if you decide to buy one I have a special offer for you. Be sure to enter the offer code SR452 when checking out as this will save you 100 pounds on a high definition light. The offer code also provides you with free delivery. So if you're looking for a fabulous new reading light for the autumn season I'd really recommend Serious Readers. And now back to the books. A very fun new non-fiction book is London Shopfronts with illustrations by Joel Holland and words by Rosie Hewitson. Uh, so this project was conceived uh, during the pandemic uh, when uh, the illustrator um, was frustrated that he couldn't visit a lot of these London shops because they were closed um, due to lockdown. So he created uh, over 200 illustrations of a number of shop fronts all through London. Some of them are very famous and well known and others are um, slightly more out of the way and obscure and specialist. And uh, uh, this kind of brings me back to, you know, a couple of years ago when I had this feeling and sensation and I made videos around the time about this of like walking through London and just seeing all these closed shops. And uh, so, yeah, flipping through this book, um, I'm reminded a lot of that. And um, so the text that goes along with these illustrations um, by a journalist who works at Time Out, um, Rosie Hewitson, um, she, it, it, they, uh, the text explores um, the culture and the history of these different shops and talking about them. So there's Libraria um, Bookshop, which is a relatively new bookshop in the east of London, um, which is really beautiful. And it's great that there they um, arrange all of their books by subject matter, you know, rather than uh, by 
um, by like fiction or nonfiction. They're all around you know particular subject matters, so it's really unique in that way. And there's a number number of bookshops represented in this, and yeah, some of them I, I'm very familiar with, and others are ones that I want to visit. So um, this is really fun to to flip through and explore. Um, so if whether you live in London or if you're an Anglophile that just wants to virtually visit the city. Sheep's Clothing by Celia Dale. This is a reprint of a novel that was first published in 1988 and it's about two women who meet in prison and once they're released they uh, decide to become, team up as con artists um, to visit a number of elderly people to try to scam them out of money pretending they're from um, services that are looking to increase um, these elderly people's pension and um, so it's it's about their um, con routine uh, but also their relationship with each other. I think this sounds so interesting. These Things Happen by Michael Eon. This is a novel set in the 1970s in Brooklyn uh, about a man who experiences a number of um, personal and familial tragedies um, but also how he gets involved in the kind of punk scene of, of the time uh, but also um, becomes an alcoholic so it's about his struggles with that and his dealing with these tragedies and I can't um, read this I'm sorry this is a very frivolous comment but I can't help reading this title and thinking of this line um, from the musical Phantom of the Opera where where one of the characters says these things do happen weirdo by Sarah Pasco. Uh, this is a novel by uh, the well-known comedian um, about a woman uh, who goes to a pub and there she runs into an old flame of hers who she thinks she's got over but she hasn't got over him. Um, so it's about her continuing uh, encounters with him and trying to stop herself from saying everything that's going through her head of, of just sort of blabbing it out and trying to contain it inside and dealing with her messy existence. So I got invited to a very fun event by the, the publisher who, uh, when Sarah Pasco hosted a literary quiz on the rooftop of the publisher's Faber, and um, which was which was really great. Um, I didn't do all that well in the quiz because I don't do all that well in quizzes, but um, it was a really lovely event and really lovely space with um, views over London. And it was really great to meet Sarah Pasco in person. Let the Light Pour In by Lem Sisse. Um, this is a collection of poems based around this exercise that the author has been doing for the past decade where at the break of dawn every morning he writes a brand new poem. Um, so this is a collection taking the best poems um, from this exercise of his um, which sounds like a really great daily routine. I mean I don't think I would ha quite have the discipline for it but uh, but uh, but it's it's a fun idea to to do and and uh, also I find like in the mornings are kind of the best times of the day for me it's when I'm most focused and can get a lot done I know not everyone is that way like my friend Anna James is is more of a nighttime person and does a lot of work during the day but I find like later in the day I find myself really slackening off and find it harder to focus um, so but yeah obviously Lem Sisse is someone that is able to get up and be creative first thing in the morning and finally I have a couple of new nonfiction books um, so first there is a letter to my trans Gender Daughter by Carolyn Hayes. Uh, so this is um, the author's real life story about um, how she discovered that her child is a transgendered girl and um, she and her family were very supportive of their daughter um, in her transition. Uh, but then uh, they, they lived in a Republican state in the United States and uh, the, a, the um, child service department got an anonymous tip um, that about how they were raising their transgender daughter and, and they came knocking on their door. And so there was a lot of interference from and, uh, and judgment by the local community. So, um, so the, the author um, uprooted her family and moved to a more liberal area um, so they could live more in peace. But yeah, it's about the continuing challenges um, going on in the transgender community. Um, you know, that includes families um, in America at the moment.
moment. And there is a big, beautiful new nonfiction book, Emperor of Rome, by uh, classics historian Mary Beard. Uh, and this is looking at the actual lives of a number of different Roman emperors um, over time, not just what they are accomplished and what they're known for, but what their daily lives were actually like. What did they do all day? What did they eat? Um, you know, how did they live? And she's looking at all of those like day to day details that we don't often think about, you know, when looking at historical accounts. And um, she specifies that you don't need to be an expert in this period of time or, or amongst these Roman emperors to understand this. Um, it's, it's very much, I, I think she has a, a great way and style of like easing you into this history in a way which is really accessible and fun. So um, I think this will be a great book to dive into over the autumn season as well. So those are all the books I want to talk about. I'd love to know if you're also interested in reading any of these books or if you have read any of them, please let me know what you think about them in the comments below or if you have any other new books um, that you acquired recently that you're really looking forward to reading please let me know about that uh, but I hope you're doing well and reading good things and I'll speak to you again soon bye bye